Let's give Sky our attention. Pardon? <laughs> what happened? Where do I do the If you click maybe on the presentation, then after that you can use the arrow. Okay. Um, so for question two, I did the identity and my race is I'm white. And then my ethnicity, I am mostly a European person and I'm like one fourth Mexican. And then for the socioeconomic status, I consider myself to be like middle class, both my gender and sex, I'm a female. And for sexual orientation, I am pansexual. And my national origin, um, I just put American. English is my first language. I have no um, I'm 14 and so religion. I put um, both Christian and gender. Um the identities I think about the most often. I think about my age and like my sexual orientation because I feel like my age, I feel like with some like people with their age, it kind of restricts them to like a lot. And also, like, I feel like because of your age, people view you a certain way or like, oh, they can't do this and they can do this because of their age. And for my sexual orientation, I think about it a lot because I mean, it's kind of like an everyday thing that I like, think about it, like with some, like, for example, like straight women, you know, if they see like a girl jumping, they're like, oh, she's pretty. But then like with me, it's like, yes, some people like think they're pretty, but I feel like sometimes the gaze could be deeper than like other people would kind of like realize. Um, I don't mean that I think about the least often. I feel like I think about my national origin and my race the least often because, and I feel like I I kind of don't think that much about race because I feel like, for example, people are people and I feel like the race shouldn't cause, but it shouldn't give like certain limits or set boundaries for certain people because of their race and people should be able to do what they want. Um, identities that I want to learn more about is my religion and it's my language <laughs> because I feel like when I made my community and like my confirmation, I felt more empathy, I guess you could say, with that. And I feel like it's something important because I feel like it's kind of therapeutic in a way. It makes me think calmer because sometimes, like, with my life is kind of chaotic. And language, I feel like the language, there are no language barriers with most of my family because most of my family does speak Spanish and I don't. So I feel like if I were to learn language, it would make things like easier. Um, the things that have the strongest effect on how I perceive myself, I feel my sexual education again. And it kind of shares the same answer as like the first question. I don't think every day thing. It's not like I wake up and forget that I'm not straight. So, and then identities that I think, identities that have the greatest effect on how other people perceive me is also my age and my sexual orientation because. Um, I know one of my family members, like, like I was saying, like the whole age, people be like, like for example, like us teenagers, we can't, like, we don't know what's right and what's wrong because of our age. There's a family member that told me, like, about my sexual orientation that I'm 14 and I don't know what I am or like what I want, and it kind of made me think that I know like there are mistakes that I've made, but I feel like for the most part, I am pretty mature and responsible especially more than some of the adults in my family. So I feel like it was kind of disrespectful to say that I don't know what I am. And I know that there are some people who, like obviously, you know, they think about their sexual orientation and they wonder like if they're, if they're straight or if they're not. And of course, sometimes there are mistakes, you know, people think that they are, but then they kind of realize that they're not. But with me, I mean, I've been, I haven't like, I've been like this for like two years. So if it's been like over two, two or three years, I'm pretty sure I would know that I'm not straight. For question five, it was a, it was a universal. And I chose characterization because I feel like throughout the entire school year timing, 
kind of bit confusing. And I understand like the idea of it, but like even using the tabloid by this like, you know, why don't like Mr. Americans ask any questions about their organization? I couldn't answer the question because it was kind of confusing to I guess explain characterization is that the story or with like a specific character. Question six was intellect. And the quote that I had was everyone is different in their own ways. It may be harder to understand certain things compared to other people, but people feel and go through different things. And I talked a lot about, I guess, what I noticed in my intellect is that I talked about a lot about respect and I feel like respect for others, respect for yourself, because I don't know, I think it's just better and it creates less conflict and respecting like especially other people's opinions obviously opinions are just based on personal thoughts and not something that's actually true but i feel like whether people think something is right or wrong most of the time it's all going to be an opinion and yeah when you have opinions you can't really say what's right or wrong but i feel like just respecting other people's opinions and i use like Part of the tree as an example because um different Grace was at first she was scared to like tell Buffy and Maya that she had a baby and she could like adoption. But I feel like she kind of eventually just kind of had to trust them that they wouldn't kind of judge her. And she just had to trust that they would respect her and, and instead of I guess judging her for it. Question seven was clear criticality. And the, the quote that I used was you don't have to gatekeep things. If other people can do the same as you, then let them. And I use shadow shapers as like an example with how John Hick was trying to help a lot of power. And Sierra was not only trying to figure out things about being a shadow shaper, but you know, she kind of wanted to one I guess in a way. So I feel like no matter what kind of power you have, it's kind of hypocritical to just kind of gate keep a certain thing because like I said, everyone should be able to be open to anything and it shouldn't really be what especially with power it shouldn't really be it shouldn't get keep it. My most proud assignment was my last portfolio because I feel like I actually took the time to like do it and I actually started it earlier than normally like compared to my other assignments so I think I did put a lot of effort in it and most of the time I don't get the best grades so those things actually kind of surprise me but yeah it just shows me it I kind of just now know that I should spend more time on my assignments and make sure that I know what I'm doing before I actually start them the assignment that needs the most of you think is the choice of media you're living in because the PBs in general are kind of hard for me to understand and I don't always get the best grades on them. And I'm not that much of a creative person. So coming up with like more thoughts, especially if I had to revise it, I it would be a lot harder to kind of think of like a new thing, like I have to change the plan and then that kind of leads to almost everything else. So I think I should have spent more time on it. And try putting in a little bit more effort and like taking it more seriously. What helps me in this class is me actually putting in the effort to like try and actually to like pay attention and like ask questions and just do my best. But also with being in groups, because like I said, it's hard for me to create in class. So I feel like when I get everyone else's like ideas or like opinions. It helps me think more outside of the box because most of the time I overthink a lot of things. So when I overthink, I mean, my mind is kind of filled with such things that I'm not able to like see it or like see something like clearly. So I guess like the other opinions that have other people or ideas kind of helps like open up new thoughts. The two previous portfolios, um, I kind of just, like I said, learned to pay attention more 
and that I should learn more. Like I know in my, my first portfolio, I said that I lacked a lot of evidence, like in our assignments. So I kind of had no way to back up what I was talking about. So I feel like just the details, I should add more details within my work. Three goals that I have is managing my time better because I feel like when I get stressed, I kind of just hold everything off and so I like to be better and want to be better. By then, it's kind of moving my assignments at the last minute. Um, and yeah, also I'm just putting more effort in my assignments. And then also asking questions because most of the time I don't really understand things. And even if I were to answer, ask some questions, sometimes the answers don't make sense, but then at that point, I just kind of take whatever I got and I don't ask, like, again, for that specific things. And yeah, what I've learned about myself is mainly just the same things of the way that I work. And I feel like, yeah, in sophomore year, I want to try harder. And I feel like I'm not saying freshman year is the time to make mistakes, but I think that you're. Sometimes I think I come from a very small middle school, so I wasn't really used to like this work specifically. But I feel like now that I've like everything that's happened throughout my freshman year, I feel like I'm able to kind of use that and put it in to my sophomore year of like the do's and the don'ts and things that I did good, and now I'm kind of just fully understand the ways that help me specifically like do better. That would be Trinity, was Trinity going next? No, the A doesn't want to go. Trinity, you want to go? I don't want to go. Then said she wants to go. I went out. No, she didn't. Yes, she did. 